guys, my name is Chole. We're gonna make um finger sticks, mashed potatoes, and gravy. Mm -hmm. So let's get started. Okay, first you're gonna cut some potato diced up potatoes, put yes. them into some salted water, and start that boiling first because those are gonna take the longest. And then in a saucepan for gravy, you're gonna melt some. Bacon grease over very low heat at this point because you're not going to be attentive for a few more minutes. And then, while you're waiting for those potatoes to heat up and boil, you're going to cut up some leftover steak from last month's barbecue. <laughs> that wasn't quite enough to feed our family in steaks, so we are making finger steaks. Okay, so after you've sliced your steak, you're going to mix up the batter. And you're going to need one egg, and you're going to want to whisk it up slightly. Then you're going to add in half a cup of milk. Nice. And then you're going to add in... That's good, babe. Let's dump the rest of these in. Then we're going to add in one teaspoon of salt. No, just come on. Just put it in. You're taking way too long. Okay. And one teaspoon of Cajun seasoning. Cajun seasoning. One teaspoon of pepper. And one teaspoon of baking Sugar. soda. This helps Cajun to tenderize soda. the meat and make the breading rise. Okay, and then you're going to mix that up. Very good. That's just about right. Now you're going to add in one cup of flour. We got flour at home, guys. <laughs> like the last video. There you go. You and stir it all up. And now that you got that all thoroughly combined, you're so going to add custard. your sliced steak. And then you're going to just mix that all together. Again. Yep. But this time, you want to mix it from the bottom. Like that. Until it's all coated. Okay, and then after you've mixed all your steak, this is what it should look like. Make sure they're all good and coated and just set those aside for a few minutes. And now that our bacon grease is melted, we're going to turn that heat up. Turn it up. Yeah, to about medium high, and we're going to add in a quarter cup of flour. You can use a quarter cup of butter if you don't have bacon grease, but bacon grease always tastes better. That's plenty enough, girl. Now mix it up. It's cooking. Hurry up. Make sure your potatoes are on a low simmer after they start boiling or they'll boil over. Okay, and then you're just going to cook and stir that. For around three minutes, maybe four minutes. Four minutes. Okay, and then after you've cooked that for about three minutes, you're going to want to add... The milk. Yep, the milk. And we're going to add three cups total. You're going to add... pretty. You can pretty much do all of it all at once, girl. This is two cups. Now mix that in. My stone spoon. Okay, now you can add your other cup of milk. There was some time. That's all right. There you go. And just turn that up to high so that it comes to a boil quickly. Maybe not that high. There we go. And then once that comes to a boil, we're going to turn it off, set it on the back burner while we cook the finger steaks. Okay, while you're waiting for this gravy to come to a boil, you want to stir it pretty constantly because you want to keep that flour suspended while it's getting hot. And while you're waiting, we're going to add one teaspoon of salt and one teaspoon of pepper. Don't stop stirring, baby. you got to stir. So, see, guys? Yeah, add them in, babe. Now, it's okay. Salt. Stir, stir, stir. And pepper. Very good. And we'll just get... 
Okay, now that our gravy is boiling, we're just going to turn that heat off, put a lid on it, set that on the back of the stove. We're going to trade places with the oil so we can get those finger steaks started. Yeah. Now, when your potatoes are soft enough that you can just mush it with the back of your spoon and it crumbles up against the side of the pan. Let me do it one more time so you can see. It's just like that. See how it just mushed apart? That's when you want to turn off the heat to this. And we're going to drain them and put them back in the pot. Okay, I'm going to turn it off. Okay, and after you return those drained potatoes back to the pot, you're going to add in one stick of melted butter. Yeah, you better let Grandma do this part. And you just drizzle it all across the top. It doesn't have to be all the way melted because those taters are hot. And then, and then you're going to sprinkle in. Salt. Just sprinkle the whole thing in. One teaspoon of salt. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. No, just tip the cup and sprinkle. There you go. There you go. And then we're going to add two cups of milk. This is two cups of milk? Yep. All right. And then we're going to first stir it up really good with our spoon and then we're just going to get our handheld mixer and continue beating those on low speed yes. until they're nice and smooth no. and now that our oil seems to be ready and here's how you check it you just get your hand wet slightly and you splash it in if it starts to bubble and pop like that it's ready if it's smoking, then it's too hot. And we're just going to grab some of these. Carefully grab one little piece at a time. Yeah. Try not to slide it against the other ones. When you're pulling it out, that'll keep the breading on. Oh, that one needs to dip a little bit more on that side. And then... Give it like that. And we're probably going to be able to fit all of these in this one pan. I would imagine so. Okay. And I'll be back in a few minutes to show you what those look like when they're done cooking. Okay, I only got about half of them in there before these started getting to where it's time to turn them. Just try to turn it so that the other side will fry nice and brown too. Which is not easy because they want to float the un uncooked side up. So. And this is only yeah. going to take about two minutes per side. And you guys, yep. you guys, listen to my grandma. <laughs> okay, Chloe, do you want to get out the mixer for our potatoes? Mixer? Yep, the red one. The red mixer. Okay. And when these are browned all the way, like that one is, on both sides, pull them out. You don't want to cook them too long or your meat will dry out. Put them onto a cookie sheet to drain. Okay, and you see how those ones in the center there are looking really dark? They're a dark colored brown instead of this light colored brown. That's when you want to pull them out. Just drip off that grease first. Put them onto a cookie sheet over here. And then when we pull these out, we can put the other ones in because they take a little bit of babysitting so you can keep them flipped so they don't burn on one side and not cooked on the other side. Okay, a couple more minutes. I didn't even press this. Okay. So guys, we're going to... It. Yeah, I'm just gonna keep this on low speed. If you didn't hear my grandma, she's gonna keep it on low, low speed. Yeah. Yeah. Just like that. And now that we got that all that liquid combined, now we're gonna turn it up and mix it till it's smooth. If he does. I like them a little chunky. And they look so pretty with the peels on. 
people that peel their mashed potatoes are silly. Cuckoo, huh? Yes. Now my well, grandma turned it off. Now it's going to be ready to serve. Let's just put a lid on it while we're waiting for them finger sticks. Yeah. Okay, and that's what they all look like when they're done. And we're just going to serve that up with some mashed potatoes. Look how pretty those are with the peel on. And I'm going to get a big enough pile right there. This is how you got to serve the gravy so that you can use it as dip for the finger steaks too. That's why we made three cups. Then you're going to want to dip your ladle into the middle of those mashed potatoes and then just tip it out. Yeah, yum. And that's what it looks like when it's done. Mm-mm-mm.